Johnny Orr has four newcomers that will add considerable depth to this year's Cyclone squad. All four are top-notch players and will make this season one of the most competitive teams in recent years. Doug Collins is a 6'1 guard who transferred to ISU from John Logan Community College in Illinois. He was an all-conference selection both years of his JUCO career. And last year, he guided his team with a 17-point average. But Doug feels that making the transition from junior college to Big 8 basketball is a giant step. Well, that's a big transition considering coming from junior college, the atmosphere on the basketball court in junior college is basically like high school. And coming into the Big 8, you have so many competitors that are better than you and, you know, so many good players until the competition is just tougher. I like this team. Uh, we have a lot of good players like Terry and Victor and, like, I feel kind of comfortable because we have a lot of newcomers, so therefore they don't put me on the spot as much. David Washington is a 6'3 freshman guard from Brother Rice High School in Birmingham, Michigan. During his final year in high school, he averaged 17 points a game. He says he likes the fast break style of basketball that's played in Hilton Coliseum. Everyone can run, and it's, it's just a fun style of play, the way we play basketball. It's exciting, and uh, you just you got to be in shape. It's just a great way to play basketball. David says he's learned a great deal about college basketball already, especially from senior Terry Woods. I learned a lot from Terry just by playing against Terry every day. He's, he's a great player. I think he's a better player than a lot of people even know. Uh, Vic's a good leader, and they, they talk to me, and they, they, they stay on me about you know, doing things that I'm supposed to do. Kirk Baker is another JUCO transfer that is expected to see a great deal of playing time this season. He's a 6'8 forward from Lansing Community College in Lansing, Michigan. He's an excellent shot blocker, and he'll pull down his share of rebounds. Following the 87-88 season, Baker was named the National Junior College Division II Player of the Year. He averaged over 25 points a game and took his team to a national championship with a 31-1 record. But Big 8 basketball is a whole new ball game for Kirk, especially the physical contact underneath the basket. Uh, yeah, yesterday uh, I got banged around a couple of times. Uh, some good picks set by Vic and Phil. They knocked me down and uh, I was kind of playing and Coach Helen and said, hey, uh, you want to play Big 8, you got to learn to play over that. So I learned to play over it. Baker likes the way this year's team is coming together, and he has some strong feelings about the upcoming season. I feel that uh, we're, we're going to surprise a couple of teams. This year, I think anybody can win the Big 8, and I think that uh, we're right, going to be right up there. The fourth newcomer to the ISU basketball program this year is Mike Bergman of Waverly Shell Rock. Last year, this 6'8 forward was named Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa. He averaged over 24 points a game and was also a member of the Iowa AAU team that beat the Russians in Des Moines. Having lived in the state of Iowa, Mike has been a longtime Cyclone fan, and to play for Johnny Orr is a dream come true. Yeah, it really is. I've always been an Iowa State fan, and it's always been a dream of mine to come here, and now that it's happened, it's just, it's just great. I think everybody, there's a lot of hard workers on this team and a lot of great talents on this team, so I think if we really get together and play well that we're going to really go far. Although these four players are newcomers to the Cyclone basketball program, they're very aware of the exciting crowd in Hilton Coliseum. I've never seen a better crowd in any place that I've, that I've been. You know, I've seen the Detroit, I've been to the Detroit Pistons game, they have great crowds, but this, this crowd is great. Uh, the crowd, that was a big adjustment for me because coming from JC, the, you, two or three hundred people was the most you'll probably see, and the crowd, it, just coming out onto the floor looking at that would really inspire me got me into the game the crowd is just great here they they help cyclones they support their fan, team a lot that it's really exciting the, the crowd here is just it's just outstanding i mean i guess it's, it's just hard I, I i've been in the crowd before and then when i got down on the floor it's just it's great doug collins david washington kirk baker and mike bergman Four quality players that will provide the Cyclones with the depth that is needed to be a success in the season ahead. This is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Justice Thigpen certainly knows the meaning of the word patience. Last year as a redshirt, he sat out the season, but continued to work on his skills and improve as a defensive player. This year, the 6'2 guard from Flint, Michigan feels he's ready to contribute, and he also feels it was well worth the wait. Well, for a while there, it was real tough, because I really couldn't accept redshirt and just 
thinking to myself, man, I'm going to sit out this year. You know, I've, I haven't sat before. And it was kind of hard. And I had to call home to my father a lot. And he had to talk to me and tell me the good sides of being red shirt. And after talking to him and Coach Orr, when they explained to me how I could be much better my fifth year than I would be my freshman year, that's when I kind of got to thinking, well, yeah, that, that could be true. And it just made me work that much harder. Having had the extra time to better himself as a basketball player, Justice also feels that that extra time has made him a better student as well. I've adapted well, I could say. I'm a much better student now than I was as a freshman because I've been through it before. Now I feel I'm comfortable. It's just like my, a home like in Flint, and I feel pretty good about it. As for his studies, Justice is still deciding on a major, but he's leaning towards a degree in communications. He says he enjoys spending his spare time socializing as well as communicating with his friends. I like to go fishing and being with, being with, going out to parties and dancing and stuff like that, I like just the fun things. Uh, if I'm not at the job, which I call basketball, then I'm out on leisure time having fun. Justice is also having fun on the court. He's off to a great start as a Cyclone. He's contributed 10 points in Iowa State's win over Toledo. And as for his personal goals, well, Justice says he simply has set his sights on the team aspect of success. I want us to have a, a winning season. I want to win the Big Eight. I want to surprise a lot of the polls that rated us low and I just want us all to stick together as a family and play play the game like we know we can and just have fun together. Coach Orr likes the depth of this year's squad. Is it more intense in practice with the competition being as tough as it is? Yes it is. It's very intense and we're talented in all areas. We're big, we're fast, we're strong and I think this year may be the year for us to go far and I feel that we, we have a shot at that Big A championship. That's what we want. And I know that's what, that's what Terry Woods wants. That's just all he talks about is he wants this Big A championship and he wants us to have a 20 win season this year. Justice comes from an athletic family. His father, Justice Senior, played in the NBA for the Detroit Pistons and the Kansas City Kings. And that experience has helped him in supporting his son at Iowa State. He didn't pressure me none. Once he found out that I really like basketball, that's when he stuck by my side a lot and gave me a few pointers and showing me how to dribble, how to control the ball when going in for layups. And it was really my decision. And whatever I wanted to do, he was behind me 100%. And so I decided to play ball, and he stuck with me, and he helped me out in all areas I needed help. Justice Thigpen, a player that will no doubt help ISU achieve justice in the 89-90 season. This is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Brian Pearson enters his second season at Iowa State. Last year as a walk-on, he played in 19 games and scored a career-high 13 points against the Oklahoma Sooners. At the end of the season, he had earned himself a scholarship with the Cyclones. With one year under his belt, Brian feels he's more relaxed on the court this year because he says he knows what to expect. Well, it's a lot easier coming in your second year than in your first year uh, in college basketball because you know more what to expect out of the uh, program here at Iowa State. and. You just, you just know uh, the players more and you know what to expect when you're coming in. When people think about Palmer basketball, they often think about three-point shooting. How did you get so good at three-point shooting? Is it something you've always practiced? Well, I worked on it a lot um, when I was younger on my three-point, or not, not necessarily my three-point shooting, just, just you know, outside shooting because I was smaller. And even in high school, I wasn't really tall. I just grew, you know, the last couple of years to six feet two. I was like 5'11 mo most of the time. and. Uh, so I had to, you know, get a shot off outside instead of taking it inside usually. And uh, but I just worked on my outside shot, and it's it's all right, I guess. It's more than all right. Brian can certainly catch fire from the three-point circle. At this year's tip-off preview, he captured the three-point shooting contest, knocking down 17 in just a 60-second time span, and that accuracy has carried over into competition. One of the baskets that Brian Pearson is probably best known for, at least last year, was a crucial three-pointer against Oklahoma State right before halftime. Relive that shot for us. 
Well, um, we just we, we were on a run against Oklahoma State, and I believe it was like 17 to nothing at the end of the first half. Um, they jumped out to a lead, and we come back and went ahead and scored like 17 unanswered points. And at the end of the half, uh, Mark Boss Mark Ball stole the ball and uh, dunked it. And then uh, in the, on the inbound on the inbounds pass, uh, Mark Urquhart stole the ball with like five seconds left and threw it to me in the corner. And I was just I was just there, and it was a nice pass by Mark, and I was just able to hit the shot. And it was really it was a really exciting moment. Got to be a good feeling knowing that uh, you were able to get that right before the buzzer. It was a great feeling to go out on that note at, at halftime against against them. You won't find a tougher competitor than Brian Pearson, and he says he enjoys the challenge of such a rigorous schedule this season. Oh, definitely you look forward to playing you know, good teams, and we're going to play four Big Ten teams and quality Big Ten teams. We're going, as you said, we're going to Michigan and Indiana and Minnesota, and we've got Iowa here. And uh, it's just something you look forward to, and you always dream about playing in big games. What motivates you as a player to come out day after day and lace up the shoes and go through this game of basketball? Oh, it's just I love playing it, and when you come out here and there's 14,000 people out here cheering, it's all worth it then. Another positive aspect about Cyclone basketball that Brian is quick to point out is the closeness of the team. We're, all, we're, all, we're a close-knit uh, group, and uh, we do a lot of things together off the court, not just on the court, you know, and uh, we all get along really well, and I'd say we're pretty close-knit. Brian Pearson, a player that is always ready to contribute in any way he can to help the Cyclones add another notch to the win column. This is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. in his third season as an Iowa State Cyclone. Last year was a tough one though for Adrian. A knee injury knocked him out of action early in the season. But this year's another story. A little bit of discomfort, but other than that, the knee is healed and he's ready to go. Sometimes I can feel it, you know, aching once in a while, then I'll just cut back on the activities I'm doing, but come game day, I'm ready to go. With you being at one of the juniors on this year's team, obviously that leadership role has now fallen on your shoulders. How do you feel you're handling it? I think I've handled it well. I mean, on the court, I, I can see myself you know, telling people where to be and when to get there and exactly how things should be ran. And um, that's basically it. Last year, you saw limited action in just a couple of games. But as you look back at last year and the year before, which one kind of sticks out in your mind when you look back at your career here to this point? I don't know. I think the UCLA game was probably my best game. And it's not so much that I was worried. I think I played more relax when I just don't, you know, just want to play and just play instead of worried about who I got to stick and all that. If I just go out and play, I seem to play a lot better. This year, Adrian's off to a very good start. He reached double figures, scoring 10 points against Toledo. Against the Michigan Wolverines, he added a 10-point performance and is averaging over five points a game. But points are not the most important statistic to Adrian Moore. It's being a well-rounded player. When I'm out there, I don't think about scoring a whole lot of points more so than I think about us doing the right things at the right time. I think that's more important than me scoring because we have Victor and Terry. So I was going to say you didn't look quite as, uh, I guess, selfish would be a term to use it. You were looking more to, to see who you could feed off to rather than take the shot yourself sometimes. Well, that's the role the coaches would like for me to play and If I want to play, then I'll be happy doing that role. Besides your schoolwork and your basketball, you're also involved in many other outside activities. Keeps you kind of busy, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm, I'm involved you know, with my fraternity, the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And also, last January, I competed in the Mr. Mrs. Black ISU pageant, which I won. So with those things, and basketball, and of course my books, it seems to be a tough schedule. On the court, the Cyclones have had a tough schedule as well. They may be a young team when it comes to experience, but Adrian feels good about the talent that takes to the floor in the Cardinal and Gold. And before this season is over, Adrian says they'll have plenty to be proud of. The future will hold great things for this team because we're basically just getting to know one another really good. And as you can see from our first games, Terry and Victor have been the leaders. But as the season goes on, more people will step in and help out more. 
Having that positive attitude and the willingness to contribute in all facets of the game is what builds a team's confidence and success. And you can count on Adrian Moore to fulfill his role with the Cyclones this season. This is Jeff Conner reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. It's been a long wait, but finally, Kirk Baker is in a Cyclone uniform. The 6'8 forward sat out last year while attending junior college at Ellsworth. Prior to attending Ellsworth, Kirk racked up some impressive stats as a player for Lansing Community College in Michigan. He was the National Junior College Division II Player of the Year following the 87-88 season. He led his team to the national title with a 31-0 record and averaged over 25 points a game, as well as pulled down an average of 14 rebounds per outing. But JUCO ball is a whole different ball game from Division I, especially in the Big Eight. JUCO, it was, it was more your talent. Uh, you know, you were in shape, but you used your talent here. You got to, it's more of a thinking game. You have to be stronger in the Big Eight. And um, there's no, there's no, everybody has the same caliber and talent. So uh, you just have to uh, use your, you know, your best abilities like uh, strengths and uh we, you know, they overcome their weaknesses. And. Kirk has played a key role for the Cyclones so far this season. He pumped in 18 points against Florida A&M. He also led the team in rebounding in that outing with 11 boards. Toledo was another big game for Baker. He netted another double-double. He had 18 points and 10 rebounds. Add to that an 11-point performance against Iowa and another 14 points against Drake, and this super junior knows he's off to a good start. It was a hard uh, transition at first uh, and I feel that the first two games I came in I did all right but I had a little mental lapse the second two games and didn't perform as well as I could and it's a big adjustment but I feel that now I made that adjustment. Some of the other adjustments that Kirk has had to make in Big 8 basketball have been positive and he says the most fascinating one has been the traveling. I've never been to places like uh, Minneapolis and just sitting up there in the Hyatt and looking out and looking over the whole city, it was just a great experience. Uh, um, just seeing places I've never you know, been before and I'm looking forward to it. Kirk plays with a very high level of intensity and emotion when he's on the court, but during the off season, he really likes to relax and get away from it all. He likes to get together with a buddy and enjoy the peacefulness of being out on a lake fishing. At home uh, during the off season, I, I like to fish a lot. And, I'm usually fishing with uh, my friend. He goes to Central Michigan. We're usually out there like four or five times during the week fishing, getting up real early in the morning, about six going fishing. With seven games under his belt so far, Kirk feels his confidence is building, and he hopes that he can continue to help the Cyclones chalk up several more victories. The points, they're going to come because the way our offense, we got the triangle offense. I think uh, we have to control the boards, you know, to help us win. Uh, a win is better than uh, points. With a look at junior forward Kirk Baker, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Koontz is a 6'9 forward, and he believes in the phrase, good things come to those who wait. After two years at the University of Illinois, Phil was not happy with the way things were progressing. So he decided to make a change. A former meeting with an Iowa State basketball coach helped Phil realize that the place to be was at Iowa State. When I came out of high school, I had a uh, really good impression of uh, Iowa State. I really uh, had a good relationship with uh, Jim Hallahan, and uh, he had told me that uh, no matter what my decision was, you know, if I decided to go to Illinois, that uh, you know he would always want me to come back here if things didn't work out. And so um, when things weren't working out, uh, you know, I always kept him in mind, and uh, I contacted him, and uh, and uh, he made the arrangements and everything. The NCAA requires athletes who transfer between Division One schools to sit out a year, and last year was that year for Phil Coons. It was really tough to to sit back and uh, watch everybody else uh, out there playing and and knowing that it would be a long time before I got to compete again. And uh, going through all the practices and uh, all the classes and everything, it was, it was a lot of hard work and uh, it was a pretty long, it seemed like a long year. 
Having to sit out a whole year is a big commitment. Did you feel at this point now that you did do the right thing? Yeah, I definitely feel I'm definitely happy about my decision. Uh, you know, things uh, it might take a little while for you know everything to work out the way I want it to, but uh, right now everything's going pretty well and. I'm really happy with it. Phil has good reason to be happy about his performance so far. He scored a career-high 13 points against Indiana, and he had an 11-point performance against Florida A&M. But he feels his best overall performance was against the Iowa Hawkeyes. I tried to you know, play the best I could you know, every opportunity, but uh, I felt like I played the best in the, the Iowa game. I felt um, you know, I, I just played as hard as I could, and it seemed like uh, you know, my shots were falling. and. Uh, uh, Rebounds were coming to me and just seemed like everything was falling in place there. With eight games under his belt this season, Phil believes he's getting better, but still has a lot to learn. Things are, you know, getting better each day, but, uh, you know, it's going to take me a while to uh, really get things going. Uh, I'm kind of new to, still new to the system as far as game-wise, and uh, it's still going to take me a while, but I'm really enjoying it, and, uh, and uh, things are looking better each day. Playing a post position is one that involves a great deal of physical contact under the basket. But that doesn't bother Phil Kuntz. Yeah, uh, haven't haven't played against anybody yet that's not physical, and uh, it's a, you know banging around and uh, everybody going to the boards hard, and uh, uh, it's tough to play defense without you know getting a foul, but uh, you know it's tough to play offense without uh, you know banging into somebody, and and uh, it's a it's a heavy contact sport. But Phil believes that Iowa State's practice does a great job in preparing him for the contact that he'll go up against in a game. You know, coaches don't call many fouls in practice, and so everybody kind of lets it all hang out. And uh, there's some days when uh, you're lucky to come out alive. You know, it gets pretty intense. I think it's really good because uh, then when you get into games and it's not so uh, uh, physical, you know, you're a little more under control, then it's a lot easier to get that rebound. Having sat out an entire season, Phil is more than ready to show what he can do, and he certainly has the right attitude. You know, I'm going to get opportunity, so uh, I got to make the most of that opportunity. And just when I get in the game, I just have to you know, play as hard as I can, and uh, you know, get every rebound I can get my hands on, and and try to make all the you know shots I can, you know, easy shots, and uh, just try to add add to the team, you know, and uh, add to the momentum of the game. With a look at junior forward Phil Coons, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. College basketball is a whole new concept for freshman guard David Washington. The 6'3 guard was a star player for Brother Rice High School in Birmingham, Michigan. He averaged over 17 points a game and was a three-year starter. But as a cyclone, he finds himself on the bench, waiting his turn at a shot for some playing time. It's a difficult position to be in after such a successful high school career, but David is approaching it with the right attitude. That is very difficult for me. I've never had to sit on the bench before in any situation I've been on, but but, but you learn, you know, it's something you got to go through. I'm not the only freshman in the country that, that this has happened to, so, you know, I understand that. It's hard, but, but I, it's something I have to live with and I go through and I'll make it. I'm still learning, um, waiting my turn on the bench, playing behind uh, Terry Woods and Brian, so it's, it's just going to be a learning period for me this year. Having played a fast-paced style of basketball in high school, David was looking for a college that would present him with the same opportunity. And that's why he chose to become a Cyclone. Uh, basically because of uh, Coach Orr and his staff. And uh, when I came on my visit, I just, I liked the atmosphere. Um, the Big A Conference is a big conference. Uh, just basically everything I, I saw that I liked. Being separated from his family for the first time has been hard for David, but he's getting used to his second home in Ames. You know, you miss your family. You're always going to miss your family. But, but I, you know, I, I enjoy myself out here. I like where I am. This does feel like a second home. Off the court, David tends to keep to himself, citing the fact that he's not the average social butterfly. Um, I don't do much. I haven't done much besides work on basketball in my life. That's what I wanted to do was play college basketball. And uh, um, I, I like listening to music, other things like that. I go out occasionally. I'm not a big uh, guy that likes to just hang out all the time. But uh, I'm pretty, pretty much to myself, pretty much, uh, you know, an individual. Eventually, David would like to log more playing time, but in the meantime, he's doing his best to study the older players and increase his knowledge of the game, especially at the point guard position. Well, I've been told before every game to, to watch Terry, see what Terry does. You know, that's the position I'm hopefully going to uh, fill when Terry leaves, and uh, I just got to focus on I just I watch everything. You know, I try to learn 
You know, I try to watch every, every aspect of the game and learn as much as I can. He's a really great ball handler, and, you know, he's really starting to shoot the ball well. Um, I sure emphasize, uh, can uh, sort of feel for him because, you know, he's new here and everything, and he's sort of learning everything, but he's catching on real quick, and he's going to be a great player in the future. The position of point guard is an important one here at Iowa State. Do you feel that you've got what it takes to handle that role? That, that is what I want. I want that responsibility. I like that responsibility. I had it in high school, and I've, I've had it all my life to, to you know, be a leader, and I, I, I think I can handle it. I can drive, dish, and penetrate. I, I try to be an all-around guard, you know. One thing, obviously, that you've learned here at Iowa State to be successful is to play defense. Right. Uh, defense is, is very important in college. Um, you know, the offense, everyone's got offense. Defense is what it, what it takes to really win. While David waits his turn to show what he can do, he continues to work hard in practice and listen to what the coaches have to say. Uh, basically, I want to get uh, improve on my strength and uh, my pull-up jump shot. Uh, that's what the coaches had me working on a lot, you know, getting into that lane. You know, it's hard when you get to college, you can't take it all the way like you could in high school. you got to pull up. So that's basically what I've been working on, that and my strength. And when the time comes for David's turn in the spotlight, he hopes he can give the crowd at Hilton Coliseum plenty to cheer about. You know, that was just great to see that crowd and how excited they are. And I, you know, I'm looking forward to being able to go out on that floor and have them cheering while I'm out there on that floor. With a look at freshman David Washington, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. basketball career of Mike Bergman has been very fulfilling up to this point. Prior to coming to Iowa State, this 6'8 forward had an outstanding high school career at Waverly Shell Rock. He led the Gohawks with a 24 point per game average and helped them achieve a 10-0 record and advance into the state tournament. His all-around skills also earned him the distinction of being selected Mr. Basketball of Iowa, an honor given out to the best high school senior in the state, which is voted on by a 16-member committee of the Iowa News Association. Being selected Mr. Basketball was definitely a great honor. And I'm real proud, and I worked hard for it, and I'm just glad things like that have happened. One of the pinnacles in your high school career had to be when you got to play the Soviet Union. You represented the Iowa AAU team, and you played both in Des Moines, and you traveled to the Soviet Union. What was that like over there? That was a great experience, you know. Uh, strong, big, strong players, you know, a little bigger than I was used to uh, in high school, and it helped me prepare maybe for college and then we went over to the Soviet Union and, and that was you know the same playing against a little older and more mature players that I, I think it, I benefited and I was a little more ready to play against uh, the college players. During his career in high school Mike was coached by his father Norm who was a member of the Cyclones in 1958 and 59. Although his father wanted him to become a Cyclone Mike says he made up his own mind to attend Iowa State. Uh, deep in his mind he would have really liked to see me come to Iowa State and continue after he did. And really, I think it wasn't that tough a decision for me because he played uh, at Iowa State. It's just something I wanted to do. I really liked the coaching staff and the crowd at Hilton Coliseum was incredible. And I just I thought the experience, I couldn't pass it up. This year, Mike was given the option of redshirting and he decided it would be in his best interest and would also make him a better ball player in the future. Yeah, Coach Orr, put the decision up to me. So I, I actually decided that I wanted a red shirt. And I thought it would you know, benefit me in the long run because this year maybe I could have got some time, maybe 10 minutes a game, less maybe. And I just figured that my fifth year here at Iowa State would be a lot more productive than this year would. Off the court, Mike has been just as successful in the classroom. He was a member of the National Honor Society for the past two years, and he's looking forward to continuing his scholastic success at Iowa State. Yeah, I really want to do well in school, too, so that after I'm through that I'll have, you know, a, you know maybe a career that will come out of it. And uh, I, I try to work hard in school because, you know, my basketball is paying, paying for this, and I, I don't want to blow the opportunity. Even though Mike will not see any playing time at all this season, he is still one of the hardest workers during practice. He really goes all out from the moment he steps onto the court until it's time to hit the showers. I'm using this year as an improvement year, you know, coming in here with the guys and they're teaching me a lot and I just try to work hard every day 
and improve so that next year I'll be ready to play. Even though 1990 will be a year of learning and waiting, Mike says he's glad that he decided to redshirt. I think my time's going to come. This is going to pay off. With a look at freshman Mike Bergman, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Dorfeld's career at Iowa State has been plagued with injuries for the past two seasons. His sophomore year, he injured his knee at Northern Iowa and had to sit out for three games. Last year, things seemed to be going better. He scored a career-high 12 points at Creighton, but two days later found himself in a hospital bed with an appendectomy. After overcoming that setback, he earned his starting job back only to lose it with another knee injury, and that one required arthroscopic surgery. This year so far has been injury-free, and Paul's determined to keep it that way. Here we're at midseason, you know, further we're going in the Big Eight. You know, I'm healthy, I'm playing well, I'm starting to really come on now. Paul is certainly glad to be back in the starting lineup, and he says that's where he feels most comfortable. Yeah, I like being in the starting uh, position. I like setting the pace for the game, and you know, having control to set the tone of the game. And you know, that's one of the things I've always worked for. And now that I'm here, you know, it's a good feeling. It's been a hard road back to locking down that starting position, but Paul says a new attitude towards practice has helped him play at a higher level of concentration. I have a new outlook, you know, in practice these days. You know, I come out and I play just like it's in a game. You know, I try and play as hard as I can. You know, I look at it as, heck, this is my fourth year. You know, it's a senior year really for me, so I'm trying to, you know, do as much as I can for the team. And then when next year comes, you know, I'll do the same thing. For some reason, Paul Dorfeld's best performances have come against the Creighton Blue Jays. Last year, he scored 12 points and pulled down 13 rebounds as ISU went on to post a 30-point victory. Well, this year, the outcome may not have been the same, but Dorfeld's statistics were even better. He had 14 points, he was 4 for 5 from the field, and 6 for 8 from the free throw line. I don't know what it has to do with Creighton. I don't know. They, I, just, I was just real fired up, you know, to go out last night, and I have been, you know, since the break, Christmas break, I've been coming on game by game here, and it just... So many um, opportunities last night to score and the way we were playing and kind of got taken out of the game by the rest. But other than that, you know, I was playing as hard as I could. You've played well in both games against Creighton, but do you think that's been your best overall performance or is there another game that sticks out in your mind? Like point-wise, it's been better. But as far as, you know, we played a 50-minute game last night and, you know, I was only in for 23 because of the foul problems, but I'd say... As an overall game, I'd still look back probably at the Purdue game when we played at Purdue. Cyclone fans will remember that game in West Lafayette for many, many years. In that contest, Paul scored 11 points and pulled down nine rebounds to help ISU upset Purdue 104-96. Paul is hoping ISU will be able to pull off some big upsets this season. But as the Big 8 schedule kicks into high gear, he knows what lies ahead. A very physical kind of ball game, Big 8 style. And we get into Big 8, it's going to be even more physical. You go up against Missouri and Oklahoma, and it gets even tougher, and it gets oh, it gets so tough on the road. You know, every home game's a must win. And on the road, you just got to, you know, if we could have squeaked that one out K-State, that just would have been a big win for the season. And, the, you know, road wins are important, and the home games are musts. So as the Big 8 season revs up, Paul Dorfeld is ready to attack it with a positive attitude, one that he felt was missing last year. Uh, I've just been uh, having a good attitude and a mental attitude before games, getting fired up, and I get out there and I just try to go as hard as I can. And, you know, in the past, I'd, I'd really just kind of just post up and take the game nonchalant, you know, as far as the offensive end, where nowadays, you know, I'm really posting strong. I want the ball, and when I get the ball, I'm going to take it to the hole, you know, try and get fouled or get the points. And, you know, I've been fortunate to be making my shots. With a look at junior forward Paul Dorfeld, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Junior college transfer Doug Collins is off to a great start in his first year as a Cyclone. 
He's averaged over 12 points a game and is the team's number two rebounder with over five boards a contest. He's a versatile player that can handle both the guard and forward positions, but he prefers to spend most of his time at forward. Well, so far I've been enjoying playing forward because I've been down there. You know, it's not really, I'm basically, from my point standpoint, I don't really think it's a force. It's kind of like a swing person, you know. I help out. I help Terry and Justice out at guard wise if they need helping out, and you know I help Vic and whoever down low on rebounding. So basically, I'm happy with four probably right now. Doug is only six one, but he sure can't get up above the rim. He can compete for a rebound or take it down for the slam dunk. Doug has the highest vertical jump on the team. He can leap an incredible 35 inches. I've never really uh, worked on my uh, jumping abilities you know it comes from out of high school you know we used to, when we ran I used to run track and you know we used to run a lot of hills and do a lot of running and it just came naturally so far this season Doug has had several games where he's reached double figures in scoring he had a career high 24 point performance on the road at Houston he scored 22 points on the road against the Drake Bulldogs and 16 points came against Illinois Chicago ironically his best performances have come on the road yeah I feel less pressure on the road you know you just go out and play you're not at, you're not at home and then you know you don't you playing against some another opponents and you're just trying to beat them and I, I just want like going out and play hard against other opponents now your highest point performance so far was at Houston, but which game do you think was your best overall performance? Well, my best overall performance I think probably was at Kansas State. You know, I didn't score as much, but I had, you know, the, I had a nice rebounding game, and I felt I played defense real well on my man. Which, in your estimation, is the more difficult rebound, the offensive board or the defensive board? Um, I think the offense, because you know, not only your teammates, but the defense going after the ball too. And um, the defensive part, it's, it comes easy to, for me, myself, it's, it, it's easy. Someday, Doug hopes to make a career out of teaching others the skills he's learned in playing basketball. Well, right now I'm a physical education major to be a teacher and a coach. And um, I get, basically I'll probably stick with that so far. I, you know, I'm having fun with it. I enjoy it. Got to have patience to work with kids. You got the patience? Yeah, I have the patience. I, like, uh, I enjoy uh, being around kids. You know, I'm an only child myself, and you know, it just falls in play. Doug Collins has a happy-go-lucky style about him. He works hard in practice, but always has a smile on his face. And off the court, he enjoys just being able to relax and listen to music. Well, I like a lot of rap. You know, I like um, soft, you know, mellow music, you know, like uh, Luther Vandross and that type of music, slow music. I, I enjoy that. You can always find me in my room at the dormitory, if, you know, playing music, you know, and... That's basically that's about it. Doug is optimistic about the remainder of the Big 8 season, and he says he just wants to contribute any way he can in helping the Cyclones finish on a strong note. I just want to go out and keep playing hard and keep doing what I have been doing in the past, and I'll be happy with that. With a look at junior forward Doug Collins, this is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Norman Brown has been at Iowa State for three seasons, but he is still waiting for his moment in the spotlight. Norman had limited playing time his freshman season, and last year he decided to redshirt. This year he suffered a dislocated shoulder which forced him out of action before the season even started. Well, I was just, I was worried about playing this year, but uh, what really was going through my mind is, you know, I had to sit out for my third straight year and I wouldn't get to play till next year. After sitting out the first seven games, Norman did see action against Indiana, Illinois, Chicago, Kansas State, and Davidson. But then more bad news for Norman Brown. He re-injured his shoulder in practice, and this time it took surgery to correct it. Well, the first time I injured it, you know, I thought I could just look over it and keep playing, but it started nagging me in practice, and, you know, the second time it came out, I knew something had to be done. Dr. Mark Broderson performed the surgery on Norman to correct his injury, and he explained what was involved. This is a new technique that um, uh, we've just been doing now for the last four months, and we've had very good success with that. It uh, allows us to go ahead and repair the uh, capsule without having to cut through the muscle, and that is what usually causes most of the downtime uh, or rehabilitation time uh, is to recover the strength of the muscle in the front of the shoulder. And what happened when he dislocated his shoulder was that the ball slipped out 
and sat here in the front. Uh, the trainer pulled things back into place, but that left uh, a looseness of the capsule in the front. And again, the second time it went out like that as well. And so what we did was uh, came in and we sutured on the inside to tighten things up along the front to prevent that ball from wanting to, to slip forward. How long will this probably take him to recover before he is fully 100% back to normal? I think that it'll take him at least uh, two months before the shoulder will be stable enough that he'll start to undergo a good, strong rehabilitation program, and then probably even, uh, probably even another several months after that before he's going to want to try and go up against Victor and start uh, blocking shots again. It was pretty much what they told me, but the pain was it was it was bad. I, I felt terrible when I came out, but you know it's all for the good. So I gotta wait another summer, but that's just another another summer I have to work harder and get myself more in condition and get my shoulder straight so I can uh, play next year. Norman feels one of the most successful ways he can bring himself back into top shape is to participate in summer basketball leagues. Yes, they have a lot of quality, a lot of NBA players, and they, you can improve a lot, you know, just by watching them and playing with them. Norman Brown can't wait to get on the court next season, but in the meantime, he says even though he's sidelined, it's still not a total waste. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, these last two years, my red shirt year and this year, I've learned a lot just by sitting, but, uh, you know, I think I'll, I'll uh, be all right. Norman Brown may be down, but he's certainly not out. This is Jeff Conner reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. assistant basketball coaches, all of whom are vital in making Cyclone basketball a success. Jim Hallahan is in his eighth year with Coach Ord Iowa State, and he pretty much oversees all aspects of the program, everything from on-the-floor coaching to administrative responsibilities. But it's a role that he truly enjoys. It's not any one thing. It's just uh, whatever I can do to, to supplement Coach Orr and to, to make his job a little easier to free him up, to give him time to do some of the things he, needed, he needs to do because he's such a... Uh, PR person in the state and it's so important that he's out there with the people a lot so when he's gone uh, everything has to keep rolling along. Coach Hallahan says the biggest changes he's witnessed while being a college coach has been the addition of the three-point shot and the 45 second clock. It's be become a much more wide open game. And I think that's where you're seeing some of these tremendous scores now because now with a 45 second clock and a three-point shot and you get athletes to play at, at a speed which they can play now then just phenomenal things happen. Rick Wesley has been with Johnny Orr since he came to Iowa State in 1981, and he too takes part in all aspects of the coaching, but his primary role is recruiting. You know, that, that's something I have my mind on all the time, uh, and it's something uh, that's vital to our program, and, and uh, so, you know, it's an important responsibility uh, to know the players, know who we want to go get, know our needs, know who's available, how they're doing, that type of thing. So I spend a great deal of my time on the recruiting angle. Uh, also. I'm very involved with the on-the-floor coaching and the practices and, and also in the game uh, just in terms of uh, what's going on out there and any suggestions I might have. In regards to recruiting, one thing that Coach Wesley is quick to point out is how enjoyable it is to be able to promote a program that is as solid and successful as Iowa State's. The good thing about Iowa State is that we don't have any aspect of our program uh, that we're not proud of. We think we've got a great school academically. We've got uh, tremendous facilities. We've got unbelievable support from our fans. So all those things are just tremendous. Steve Craftsison is in his third season as an Iowa State assistant coach. His primary role is scouting the opposition. He spends countless hours in front of a big screen TV making the necessary notes to help Coach Orr build up the right game plan. Craftsison had a successful career playing for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and he agrees that his playing experience has enabled him to be a better coach when it comes to teaching the fundamentals. Just got to work on little things like, you know, rebounding and any kind of little advantage you can you can have. And I try and look at their footwork and things they do and their body positioning that just may help them out just a little fraction of this. It may be a difference between a you know basket and getting it blocked. So a lot I think experience does help me because I you know from playing in the post and playing inside. 
Coach Orr's fourth assistant coach is Jeff Sesker. He's in his second year as a graduate assistant, and he has two main responsibilities. My biggest thing probably in coaching is the film exchange. I do all the film exchange. We exchange films with other teams so that we can scout from them. Uh, they've given me the opportunity to go on a couple trips, uh, scouting trips to scout teams, which Coach Craftsman does most of it. Um, then I'd uh, monitor study tables, uh, check classes once in a while, and a little bit on, on the court coaching, but it's mostly just a learning experience. And then the uh, second aspect of my job is to go to class as a grad assistant, go to grad classes, which uh, is a great opportunity to get my master's degree, and I think that'll help me in any career I choose. Jim Hallahan, Rick Wesley, Steve Craftsison, and Jeff Sesker. Four quality coaches that work together to achieve one major goal, and that is to make Cyclone basketball the best that it can be. This is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. Alexander recorded one of the most productive sophomore seasons in school history last year. He collected numerous honors and awards, including honorable mention All-America by the Sporting News. He was also named to a couple of all-tournament teams. He won Big 8 Player of the Week honors last March, was named the team's most valuable player at their awards banquet, and was a member of the United States team that won the World University Games in Europe. But the honor that meant the most to Vic was being named to the first team All-Big 8. You know, they gave me that honor that I knew that, you know, I was respected around the league by the coaches and the players, so I thought, you know, that was the, the best honor I received last year. Victor admits even he was surprised to have such a productive sophomore season, but his success last year has brought on an even bigger challenge this season. I didn't look at it really as no pressure on me, but I know I had to be better this year because, you know, last year was like a surprise season for everybody. You know, everybody didn't really expect me to have the year I had. And this year, I guess teams, you know, around the country, you know, kind of know who I am. And, you know, they double team, triple team me. So it's a little hard, a little hard to work. But, you know, I, I've been having a pretty good year so far. Victor Alexander, the 14th player in Iowa State history to score over 1,000 points. And you did it your junior season. Yeah, that, that was a goal I had when I came here. You know, I guess, you know, I, I did it in high school and it was a thing I wanted to do here. And, you know, and it, it kind of makes me feel good that, you know, I scored a thousand points. But, you know, my the team isn't really having a season that, you know, I expected us to have. You know, if I could trade in that thousand points for a winning season, then I would do that. Vector takes credit for his successes, but he's also quick to point out that his teammates make the job a whole lot easier. I, teammates are just, you know, they, they give me the ball into the basket real close. And, you know, when I get it in, you know, that close, I can usually make a high percentage shot. And, you know, I've been shooting the ball pretty well also. This season, Victor is averaging 21 points a contest. He pumped in 30 points to lead the Cyclones past the Drake Bulldogs. He also had a big game against the UNI Panthers, contributing 27. He then came back the following game for another 27-point performance against Kansas State in Manhattan. And at home against Creighton, Vic really had things working in top form. He netted a career-high 37 points and pulled down 17 rebounds. In fact, 13 out of ISU's first 20 games this year, Victor has used his soft touch to score 20 or more points. Yeah, I try to, you know, ever since I was like in the ninth or 10th grade, I always had a pretty good shot. And just like over the years, I just keep working on it, work on it. Like oh, during the summer and before and after practice, I just shoot, shoot, seek, and I keep, you know, keep that rhythm and that form. Next year will be Victor's final season in a Cyclone uniform. And as he looks back on his career, he says he has no regrets. And he's looking forward to making his final year his best. It's always been a great place to play here at Iowa State since I've been here. You know, I've been enjoying all, all three years I've been here, you know. And, I, you know, I hope we can, you know, pick it up and, you know, go and have a, you know, finish this year all good. And, you know, next year we finish out my senior year real good. With a look at junior center Victor Alexander, this is Jeff Conner reporting for the Johnny Orr Show.
story about a youngster who grew up in Minnesota wanting so desperately to play big time college basketball. Well, at the end of a very successful career in high school, Brian Hager signed to play with Iowa State. It's now four years later, and that career is coming to an end. The 6'9", 240-pound center may not go down in the record books as one of Iowa State's All-Americans, but he's been a player that has truly contributed to the program. Although Brian's playing time has been limited, he says the time he did spend on the court was quality time, and he's very glad he had the opportunity to suit up as a Cyclone. Well, it was a great thrill for me. I mean, this is a top-notch program, and the coaches here are top-notch, and it just, it's been probably the highlight of my career, I mean, my life probably right now, you know, it's really been great. Brian's hard work and dedication on the practice floor has earned him plenty of respect from both the coaches as well as his teammates. Brian Hager is, is a blue collar worker on this team. He's a guy behind the scenes. He's a guy who doesn't get a lot of playing time, doesn't get a lot of attention uh, during games, but he's such a hard worker that he makes the other guys stay sharp on their game. You know, every day in practice he comes in, he works real hard, and you know, he really pushes the other guys. You know, you come in, sometimes you don't really feel like playing. He'll jack you up because he, he'll get out there and he'll push you around and make you mad, and then you have to play. So, I, you know, the years I've been here, I think, you know, Brian Hager's really, you know, really helped this team out. I tell you, Brian, he's got a great attitude. Uh, he's a, you know, fun person to be around. And on the court, uh, he makes you work harder than anybody I've ever played against. He's, uh, he's so strong and, and big, and he works so hard that uh, after banging around with him for a couple hours, when you get in the game, <laughs> you know, it makes it easy. He's a real physical player, you know. He just hasn't got his chances as far as playing time. But, you know, I think he... Uh, has really contributed as far as practice wise because he'll beat on you every day and people complain about that and then the coaches you know say hey that's the way it's going to be in the game and it is. So I want them to play to the best ability and work their hardest so that's pretty much yeah, what I try to do right now. Off the court Brian has been making high marks in industrial engineering a degree which does require a great deal of time management. You got to plan your time accordingly you know like we had school all day and then we had practice like from three to five or from actually three to seven by the time I got home. And you just, you have to set your goals, you know, you have to like, I usually study pretty much every night when I have a chance. You know, you just got to put that in mind first before you do uh, other activities. You're known for taking a book or two on the road with you? Yeah, that's what I said, but I do that. I mean, I, I, so when you have to get assignments turned in like the next day in class, you have to do that. Brian is still undecided as far as which direction he plans to pursue in industrial engineering, but he is very grateful for the chance he's had to attend college and earn his degree, and he hopes that it will help him land a job back home in Minnesota. I'm hoping to go back to Minnesota because I'm really close to my family, and I like, to live, I like Minneapolis a lot, and hopefully if I get a job up there, I'd like to go up there. Down the road a few years from now when Brian Hager is sitting behind that desk in the big leather chair as an industrial engineer, you think back about Iowa State basketball, what's going to come into your mind? It'll probably take a while for me to sink in that, you know, it's over with, you know, I'll, and my basketball career is over with, you know, because I had a lot of fun playing basketball throughout the years, and it's been a great thrill in my life. And so it goes for that young aspiring player in Robbinsdale, Minnesota. It may be an end to a dream come true, but the memories from Iowa State basketball will stay forever. This is Jeff Connor reporting for the Johnny Orr Show. State has, has been really a dream come true. In high school, you know, I was the smallest guy on the team, so, you know, I didn't know where, where my basketball talents would end up at. And to come here has really been a dream come true for me, and i really like to thank Coach O for giving me the opportunity. My greatest asset is that I'm a competitor and I love to compete and, you know, winning means a whole lot to me and when you have that desire to win, you know, sometimes that, that overshadows the limitation you have, which is size in my case.
you know, the fans, you know, all those little kids, um, if if they see enough of me to even want to ask me for my autograph, you know, I, I definitely feel like I should take time out, you know, to 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 go ahead and sign them. Um, they mean a whole lot to me. That that shows to me that maybe I'm doing something right when, you know, the kids they're coming up to me asking for my autograph. Oh, as I look back, I would definitely say the year that we got off to such a great start. I think the 16-2 start, and we were in the NIT tournament, and we went down to Purdue, and no one really thought we could win, and we pulled that game out, and we ended up in New York. I would definitely say that was the highlight of my career. Well, playing for Johnny Orr, it's been the best thing that can that could ever have happened to me. Um, you know, he, he's the one that came to me and, and gave me the opportunity. So I'm forever indebted to him, really. Um, without him, I wouldn't have had a chance maybe to play in a Division One program. And, you know, when I got down on myself early in my career, um, even when I doubted myself, he was always there encouraging me to keep on trying. And I think because of him, I've been able to succeed on the court. <laughs> People have been great, the fans and my family, they've been behind me the whole way and the coaching staff. So it's going to be something that I'm going to dread leaving, but I don't know. It's just been a great four years for me. I want to definitely get my degree. That's what I came here for. And it will mean a lot to me to be able to, to go ahead and graduate. Um, that's my number one goal, and life after that, well, I just sort of roll with the punches.